Welcome to the table of the Lord. I have to say this is, uh, this is somewhat difficult for me, and I look forward so much to uh, seeing a room full of smiling faces as opposed to the way we're doing this, but, but we're going to be all right. Um, I wanted to share this morning at the uh, elders meeting we had this past week, George had mentioned about and brought up about how uh, mammals uh, as a whole tend to be social beings, and that, that uh, not, not every mammal, but the majority tend to be social beings, beings and that includes humans, and we're the same way. You know, uh, man needs to be among other, other men and women. It's just that's just the way we are. We're social beings. And uh, God intended it that way. Even back in uh, Genesis, the second chapter, the 18th verse, God said it is not good for man to be alone. And I know right now a lot of people are feeling that loneliness, feel the feeling of being alone. We can't visit each other. We can't, uh, we can't go out and take, partake meals together. Uh, I know for me, not being able to hug my grandkids, um, not be able to visit my mom, it, it's really challenging. And, and especially for, I, I feel so bad for, for ones that are in, in hospitals and, and in nursing homes and that to go through that and that, that feeling that has to be loneliness. Right now, many people just are truly feeling alone. As we come around this table this morning, to partake of these emblems, this, uh, this bread, it's going to represent Jesus' body, and the fruit of the vine, it's going to represent his spilled blood. This is probably the most unifying way that Christians worship in, in any way. Of all the things we do, this is the most unifying. And uh, so I, I want us to feel like we're not alone, and I want to talk a little bit about that. You know, Jesus... Uh, Jesus was fully human. He was fully God, but he was, had every human characteristic. Jesus felt loneliness too, uh, and he knew all about it, being alone. He experienced it. And I want to read a scripture from Gethsemane. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and Jesus said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took Peter, James, and John along with him, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled. My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death, he said to them. Stay here and keep watch. Going a little farther, he fell to the ground and prayed that if it is possible, the hour might pass from him. Abba, Father, and everything is possible for you. Take this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Simon, he said, Peter, are you asleep? Can't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus, in the garden, he wanted to be with his friends. He, he wanted that comfort. He wanted them to be there with him, to pray with him. But he was alone. They, they couldn't do it. They fell asleep. Three times, in fact, Jesus went back and, and confronted these these men and and they were they were asleep they weren't able to 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 be there to comfort him they just couldn't do it Jesus knew that lonely feeling and again remember Jesus was fully man he had all the same feelings that we do when Jesus then shortly after this was arrested and he uh, was put on trial again he faced that that feeling of loneliness now there were some of the followers that were around in the background and we know that story about Peter and, uh, and, and others that were there. But there's a verse um, in Mark, the 14th chapter, verse 50, that said, Then everyone deserted him and fled. Jesus felt alone. Then on the cross, you know, again, some of the disciples were there. Uh, there there's some mentioned in the women that were there around the cross, but they were, they were afraid for their own lives, and so they were staying in the background. Jesus alone was the perfect sacrifice. It was up to him to, to be placed on that cross and to, uh, to take that suffering on his own. And even the father, his father, had to look away and allow his son 
to carry all the burden of the world's sin on him alone. But as uh, Paul Harvey would say, the rest of the story, you know, because of our Savior's broken body and spilled blood that's represented here at this table, we never have to be alone again. When life is hard, Jesus is our comforter. When we feel alone, Jesus is our companion. When we're sad, Jesus brings us joy. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Psalm 23, 4. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them, for the Lord your God goes with you. You will never leave. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Deuteronomy 31, 6. Cast all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. 1 Peter 5, 7. Again, as we come around this Lord's table to celebrate the sacrifice of our Savior, remember, Christians all, all around the world are partaking today in the same way. We are unified and we're not alone. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, uh, thank you again for another day of life, a blessed day. And Lord, uh, as we partake of the emblems, this, the, the bread that represents that broken body and the fruit of the vine that represents your spilled blood, Lord, we just pray that we would remember and, and realize the sacrifice that you were willing to make to take all of my sins and everyone's sins upon you, Lord, and to be punished and to be murdered on a cross. But Father, the good news is we never have to be alone again. We praise your name. You're a great and awesome God. Guide and direct us in Jesus' name. Amen.